Hello, everyone. Welcome on back. It's Betting Weekly WTA show with myself, Nigel Cedia, and a WTA handicapper, uh, Sean Calvert. I was going to call you Sean Calvert. Rory and Jawani. <laughs> I'm so used to call, I used to have your number, Sean. I was going to call you Sean Calvert. I was going to say, uh, Rory Jawani, good afternoon to you, Rory. How are you, mate? I'm not bad. Um, God, we had a bit of a mad week last week, didn't we, in Dubai? And well, we, we did sort of say it is a tournament which traditionally has shocks, but I don't think anyone would have predicted either of the finalists in Dubai uh, yesterday. Just a crazy, crazy tournament. I mean, I think I think our analysis was pretty good at the tournament. We said the third quarter was weak, um, and I picked Emma Navarro and Leila Fernandez because Jasmine Paolini came through that, um, made it, went on to win the tournament. And in the top half... Um, well, Anna Kalinskaya coming from nowhere, coming from the qualifiers. Um, just absolutely incredible. Um, she put out our pick, Yelena Ostapenko. That was really disappointing at the time, but then she beat Coco Goff in Iga Swiatek to reach the final. Um, I was saying to someone, it's never a good sign when you get to the end of Tuesday and Ostapenko is your only remaining ticket. But um, just a crazy tournament. And I had a screen grab, actually, of the odds from last Sunday that I looked at. And neither Paolini or Kalinskaya were in it. And the prices went beyond $200. So, you know, Kalinskaya was in the qualifiers, so she wouldn't have been quoted at that point. Paolini was at least $250 and went on to win the tournament. So, you know, you've just got to put the week behind you and and, and move on. Um, obviously, there were upsets aplenty. Um, Paolini got a walkover over... Um, Yelena Rybakina, who said she was feeling a bit worn out, unsurprisingly, given the amount of tennis she's played, played recently, but she pulled out with a gastrointestinal illness. Sabalenka, Irina Sabalenka, fell at the first hurdle to Donna Vekic. Now, I remember last year we, we looked at, I think it was actually the Australian Open, it was the Australian Open right at the beginning of last year. Um, and we looked at Vekic has a really good head to head against Sabalenka. Obviously, Sabalenka beat her in Melbourne last year. But uh, that is one to note. Vekic does have a good head-to-head -head against Sabalenka. And Sabalenka was in a, a winning position and then six love in the third to the Croatian. It's just crazy, crazy week. Um, and obviously Sviontek going out to be back in a, um, sorry, Kalinskaya. So just one of those weeks where you've just got to, you've just got to look at it and move on, I think. It just shows you, doesn't it? Paulini come from nowhere, like you say, she was probably... 400 to one to win the tournament. She's now up to 14 in the world rankings on the back of that result. You know, that's an incredible change, a life changing week for Canada Sky is now into 28 in the world rankings. So she's going to be seeded for, you know, if she carries on now, she'd be seeded for the French Open if it was tomorrow. So a real, real incredible uh, week. If someone told me, if, if someone shows me a winning betting ticket of Palini or Canada Sky to win the tournament, I'll show you a liar because there's no <laughs> way, there's no way that anyone has, anyone has predicted them. But like you say, we, we did say it was a tournament shocks. We did say, the favourites were vulnerable. Um, Sabalenka was one who came in quite cold. Obviously, she hasn't played since winning the Australian Open. She's come here straight away. And she got beat six love in the final set. So it does show you need to be finely tuned, really, to to come into a tournament and, and you know to go on to expect to win it. It's very hard to have a, such a rest and then go into a tournament and win it. The other thing I would say as well with Kanaskaya is that obviously she beat Goff and then she beat Shriontek. And that was the biggest win of her, year, of, of her life. She's into the final. And she went into that final, Kanaskaya, as a minus 250 favourite. And I didn't bet, I didn't bet Paulini, but it goes back to my call of sign of auto fade. When you've had that big win against a big seed that she did against Ronte, she's gone in, everyone thinks she's going to replicate that form. It's very hard to replicate that form. She's probably played her final by beating Ronte. And then she runs into Pat Paulini, who if they met on the if they met on round one, it'd probably be in a 50-50 call. But because Callan Sky beat Goff and beat um, Shrontek, it was one of them bets that in hindsight I should have pulled the trigger on it, but I didn't. But I was I was I was pretty gutted that uh, I didn't bet Paulini in that final when I saw the odds because I was I, I thought that was definitely my auto fade the things I do when someone has two big wins against big players. Yeah, and and as well, Callan Sky came from qualification, so it was a really long week for her, a fantastic week, obviously. Um, I was kind of just thinking about sort of looking forward, as you say, both are going to be seeded at the next slam, which is amazing. Um, both hadn't shown much form this season. I mean, Callan Sky did reach the quarterfinals of the Australian Open. She beat Paulini in the last 16 to get to the quarterfinals. Hadn't shown anything apart from that. And Paulini has shown even less. Um, 
I mean, I think last season we'd mentioned the pair in briefly. Alan Skyer beat Rybakina in Madrid last year. Uh, couldn't find any consistency. I think she did have a few injury problems. She did win a one two five event last November in the States, but not a strong field by any stretch. Late last season, I did back Paulini to take a set off Sabalenka, uh, which she did. And she does generally perform well against bigger servers. Um, in that final, Kalin Sky only won 53% points on first serve, um, which is pretty low for her. And she is a good server. Um, but, you know, Kalin Sky, I think Kalin Sky is up to, is it 24? I think maybe it's mid 20s somewhere. Mm. She could, if she finds a bit of consistency, she could break the top 20. Paulini at 14 looks awfully high. I, I can't see her progressing. Um, interestingly, Dubai, it did play a bit quicker than expected. Um, the service hold percentage was 68.8%. It was a bit quicker than Doha the week before. Not massively so, but you know, it, was, it played 67% last year, Dubai service hold. So I, I just think... I do just think it was one of those weeks, though. I, I, it's very hard to see, especially Paolini, getting that sort of run and, and being able to reproduce that. I could be wrong, but nothing previously has shown that. Kalin Sky, you, could, you might have seen it in glimpses beforehand, where, you know, so she beat Rebecca in Madrid last year. She's got a good all-round game, good serve. She could break the top 20, but Paolini at 14 does look very high. Will the shocks continue this week? I doubt it very much. And this week we have two tennis tournaments, both returning to the USA. So two tennis tournaments. A lot of the people who watch this show, obviously with our sponsors, Bet Rivers, will be American viewers, American betters. So you, you won't have to get up early to the European times or, or the times on, around the world. It'd be on your time zone at the moment. So that'd be quite good for you. But if you do want to watch the matches, obviously you can watch the live and bet live with Bet Rivers on those matches. Two tournaments this week. One of them is a WTA 500 event in San Diego. And the other one is a WTA 250 event in Austin in Texas. Now we're recording this on Sunday lunchtime in the UK. And as we're recording it now, Bet Rivers have only got the odds on one tournament, which is in San Diego. We're awaiting uh, the Austin prices to come out. Uh, but we thought we'd record it now, and then obviously we'll give our links. We go through a draw, and if we can sort of highlight some value when the bet rivers have when bet rivers have the prices, you'll be able to head across and look at the, the, the our analysis and see where you might place your bets on that tournament. So, without further ado, let's move on to San Diego. Now, last week we said that Dubai was a tournament of shocks. In, loads of shocks in Dubai. In, in San Diego, it isn't a tournament of shocks. It's only been going for two years, but it's been one by people high end of the betting market. Last year it was won by Kajikova, Barbara Kajikova. She won the tournament in 2022. It was won by the tournament favourite and number one seed and world number one, Igor Svontek. None of those players are in action this week, uh, but the number one seed here was Jessica Pegler. We'll come on to her chances in a minute. But Rory, what do you, uh, give us the trends, what we've got to look for over in San Diego. Yeah, it's a tricky one to, to have definitive trends. As you say, it's only been going for two years. Last year, it was right at the tail end of the season, just checking sort of mid-September. So after the US Open, Krzykova beat Sofia Kenin in the final. Um, Angevin was the top seed, Carolyn Garcia two, Maria Sakkari three. Krzykova was four and went on to win it. Uh, the year before, uh, yes, Fiontek beat Donna Vekic in the final. Again, that was, um, I think that was held in September as well. Yeah, it was mid-September as well. No, sorry, it was October. It was October for the women. The men's was in September. So now it's moved to February. It's the week before Indian Wells and, and Miami, the, the big two Amer American 1,000 tournaments. Most of the top players taken a week off before Indian Wells, unsurprisingly. Um, they've just finished in the Middle East. Um, so it's for a 500, it's a pretty weak field. Um, Jess Pegula is the number one seed. She missed the Middle East swing with a neck injury. She's also split with her coach, David Bitts, which is a bit of a surprise given that she had so much success working with him. Um, the top four seeds get buys into round two. At Pegula's quarter, she's got Caroline Wozniacki and Diana Yastremska. Um, in the second quarter, you've got Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova. Lara Tolson and Marta Kostyuk, they've been a big names there. In the third quarter, again, um, just to mock me, I think, uh, Leila Fernandez and Emma Navarro, just like in Dubai. Uh, and in the fourth, 
quarter, you've got second seed Beatrice Adajmaya, who, who's been playing pretty dismally since reaching the semis in Abu Dhabi, and Donna Vekic, who, as we mentioned, knocked out Sabalenka. But th- we're definitely on the sort of slow, medium courts, slow, hard court, very, pretty slow, really. I mean, both of them, San Diego and Austin, very, very similar court conditions last year. Uh, San Diego played 66, 62.2% service hold and 62.4% um, first serve points won. So pretty slow. Um, saw some of the qualities and not quick at all. They also play at night under the lights. Um, but it's not warm either. You'd expect in California to be a bit warmer, but 60 degrees Fahrenheit, about 16 degrees Celsius for most of the day. So it, it's going to play fairly slow. So slow conditions are what the players will find in San Diego. As Rory said, the top four seasons, 32 women draw, 32 player draw. The top four seeds always already get by through to the last 16. Now, Jess Pegula, Pavlichenko, the top half, and in the bottom half, Navarro and Haddad Meyer, as Rory said there. Um, the one thing you've got to look at here, Rory, is looking at this draw, the bottom half, to me, looks a whole lot easier than the top half of the draw. I think the top half of the draw is a difficult one to look at. But before we look at the breakdown of the draw, Jess Pegula is the bookie's favourite here with Betra, but she's plus 280 to win this tournament. Now, we saw last week Sabalenka making a long comeback. Didn't work for her. Jess Pegula's got that do that as well. She hasn't played since the Australian Open, where she didn't play very well at all. She had a really poor start to the year as well. Uh, and it's going to be hard for her to recover from injury. New coach, as you said, I think that the odds, we're going to come on to the odds in a minute. I think she's she could be a fade here. Now the odds are Jessica Pegula, plus 280. Uh, Beatrice Adamaya was in the bottom half of the draw, plus 550. Pavlichenkova is $7. Leila Fernandez, um, I quite liked her chance this week, but when I saw the odds, plus 750, I thought I, I need to at least nah, double that. Bit uh, short. Emma, yeah, Emma <laughs> Navarro is $8. Yastromenska is $12. Donovetic, $14. Kostyuk is $16. Sinarkova, $16. Wozniacki, $16. Uh, Lin Zhu, uh, Zhu Lin is, is $20. Clara Towson is $20. I know we're quite keen on her in some tournaments before. Blinkover is $22. Katie Bolter is $25. And then we go into 33 to 1 bar of those players. But I think Jess Pegula here is the interesting one here. A very short pra- favourite, a plus 280. But for me, a, a huge fade. Yes, I'd have to agree with you. Um, I, as I say, you know, she's been off the court for a while. As you say, I think she went out to Clara Burrell in the Australian Open. Not started the season well. Yeah, it's and and a tough, a tough. I think you're right. The top half is tougher than the bottom. Um, I think there are enough dangers in that top half to make that price look very short. And obviously, we haven't seen her for a while. Her path to the final. Um, first up, she'll get a qualifier or Vivara Bracheva, who's really out of form. So that that should be fairly routine. Then, you know, round three, um, anyone from Caroline Wozniacki, Anna Blinkova, who beat Rivakina in Melbourne, Carolyn Do- Dolhide, who's not been playing badly, or Diana Yastremska, who I'm not sure will get this far. I mean, since making the Australian Open semi final, she's just won one match out of three. So I'm, I'm tempted. It's a bit early. But I'm tempted to say that was a bit of a flash in the pan, her uh, run in Melbourne. Um, and then in the semis, it's possibly Pavlyuchenkova, Clara Tolson, Xinyu Wang, Marta Kostyuk, or even Magdalena Freck, who, Freck, who's had some good results of late. So I think that top half looks... I think the path for Pegula, I think she's going to have to be playing pretty well to make it through. I mean... It, in the top top half, I, I, I've got a, a clear pick in, in Pavlia Chenkova, who I think is back to very good form. She made the semis in Doha, and then she won her opener in Dubai and then pulled out uh, through illness. Um, and she said, I need to look this up, because she said she, she had a virus. She picked up a virus early in Doha, um, which makes her run to the semis there even more noteworthy. Um, and providing she's fully recovered and, you know, she's made the trip. So you know, I, that suggests that she is. Um, I, you know, I can't have any of the top. I can't have either of the top two, to be honest. With um, Pegula, as we've discussed, first tournament back in a while, back from injury, split with her coach. Hadaj Maya, she's had two first, well, first two, but two first match exits um, since reaching the semis in Abu Dhabi. 
and she fell apart against Paolini um, in her opener last week, won the opening set, and then she was bageled in the third. Um, she's definitely a fade from my point of view. Um, Pav Pavlyuchenko is best of the rest at, at $7, and I think she's she's definitely worth a bet in the top half. So Pavlyuchenko for Rory in the top half. I quite like Marta Kostyuk. I thought she had a chance at 16 to 1. Um, I, I, I definitely... agree. She won She won Austin last year. So the other tournament this yeah. weekend, Kostyuk won that tournament last year. Very similar conditions. That was her first WTA victory. Hasn't been in great form. And I don't like her matchup against Pavlyuchenkova. And they've got a good chance of meeting. But um, I, I, I definitely looked at her more than once before going for Pavlyuchenkova. Yeah, she she interests me here. I mean, I think I, Pavlyuchenko has got a very good record uh, in in Russia and um, tournaments around sort of locally. I think when she goes abroad, she, like further abroad, she doesn't do so great. Um, that's something I don't, I don't know if that's definitely true, but I remember someone telling me that years ago. I, I haven't got a data to back that up actually, so I'm sure that she has a she had a better record in tournaments in her homeland. I'll check that out when we'll have a look at it. Um, in the bottom half of the drawery, what do you what do you what what are you like there? I don't know what you what you're looking at. I mean, Fernandez looks the obvious one to me, but I think plus seven fifty, I'd I'd want a lot more than that. Yeah, I think her and Navarro are probably the obvious ones. Um, yeah, I I just think this could be this looks really really open, um, and I quite like someone at a price. Um, and just based on the prices, I, I'm tempted to give Lesia Serenko a go. Um, she beat on Jabir in Doha. Uh, then she pulled out of her clash with Naomi Osaka with an elbow injury. Um, she does have an incredible amount of uh, withdrawals, um, Serenko. But when she's playing well, she, she does perform. And, and, and these slow hard courts um, tend to be where she excels. Um, also in her favour, first up, she's got Katie Bolter, who I also had a look at, um, Serenko's got a 3-0 and head-to-head oh -head record against Bolter. Um, and I think Bolter would prefer quicker conditions. I, I think these conditions will be right up Serenko's street. If she gets past Bolter, then she'll face Hadaj Meyer. And as mentioned, she's she's a fade for me. Uh, and then possibly Donna Vekic. And, and the last two times Serenko and Vekic have played, Serenko's won them both. So not I, I've said before, I'm not really massively on head-to-heads, but in, in these conditions where Serenko is proven and someone like Vekic isn't so good. I mean, she's another player who'd want it quicker. So I think for Serenko in these conditions, she'd have an advantage over Vekic, over Bolter. Um, and Hadaj Meyer isn't in great form. So if she gets th through those three matches, she's almost there. So <laughs> at $33, I think Serenko is worth a half point each way bet, just because it's, it's a wide open tournament. I was disappointed by Navarro and Fernandez last week. Obviously, Paolini went on to win it, but I would have expected Fernandez to beat Paolini. Um, I would also have expected Navarro to beat Maria Sacchari, who had been in pretty awful form. Um, she split with her coach just before uh, Dubai, and then she won a couple of matches, but then went out to Paolini. But um, Serenko, if she gets going, who knows? And I think at $33, she's worth worth a small bet. I think it's wide open. I think this tournament is wide open. I think the favourite is a big fade. I think if you look at some big, big price players, you're going to get a good run for your money. And underdog bettors have done well um, in the last week in Dubai. And I think they're going to <laughs> Just a bit. So we're going to, the tip's going to be Pavlachenkova is our main pick. I'm guessing, is that going to be win only, Rory? Or we're going to go each way? We'll go each way still. Um, so we're going to go each way for Pavlachenkova, the number four seeds. She's through to the last 16. She has a buy. She could pay to Clarence House, which being a tough match for her but we think the Russian will prevail and then go all the way to the final. And hopefully her opponent in the final will be Serenko uh, at 33 to one, the Ukrainian girl, which would be quite an interesting final, the Russian against the Ukrainian uh, in San Diego. Um, Rory, um, let's move across to the other tournament. Now, unfortunately we don't have any prices, the WTA 250 event in Austin. Um, there will be odds available on the Bet Rivers website, probably sometime today on Sunday. Just hopefully this will drop Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon for you stateside and you'll be able to head, head across and find the odds. But as we were time of recording here, there unfortunately there's no odds available on this tournament as of yet for the tournament winner. Um, now this starts tomorrow. And both these tournaments start around about 1 p.m. Eastern time. So a nice start for you as well. So it's no, nice and easy for you to, uh, you don't have to worry about setting the alarm clock and you can 
watch the tennis on, on your lunch break. And remember, you can watch any of these matches if you uh, have a bet on the Bet Rivers website. So you can bet live and watch live as well. Uh, let's have a look at this tournament. This is not the greatest of tournaments, but before we go on to the draw, what are the you know, you said it's going to be very similar to San Diego. We've only had one year of this tournament before, and that was obviously won by Klistrick, the girl who I think might do well in San Diego. Uh, she won the tournament last year. She's not in the tournament. She beat Gracheva in the, in the final. And she's not in the tournament as well. Both of them opted not to play this event. So um, a difficult one to look for trends, I'm guessing. I, th I think it's going to be quite hard to find some kind of angle of attack or for sort of a sort of a, a, what a typical winner here or, or, or someone we should be looking at or, or a player that we should be sort of a narrative of a winner here. I think it's going to be hard. Yeah, very, very much so. Um, I think, yeah, as I said, it's it's slow. It's slow conditions again. Weather-wise, actually, big contrast to San Diego. It's going to be pretty hot first few days. Then it cools down quite considerably in the middle of the week and then heats up again near the weekend. Uh, and Helena Kalanin is the top seed. I mean, she reached a final in Rome last year. Hasn't shown anything like that form since Uh Diane Parry from France. She's the number five seed, also in that top quarter. Um, quite like Camilo Osorio in that top quarter. If she can get going, she's up against Elise Cornet first up. Uh, the big I name. The, I, I think, think that's the. I don't know the odds. I haven't seen the odds yet, but I think that will be the best bet of the first round. I know we're only talking about WTA uh, winner here, but I looked at that and I thought that Osorio to win that first round match against Cornet was the best bet because. I've seen Azario live a few times stateside and at some tours. I've never seen anyone have a bigger support. They are the, the Colombian support yeah. is absolutely wild, and she can have a lot of support here. And I think Azario at a decent price, or you know, she, she, I don't think she's going to be much of a heavy favour for that. But she should, you know, she might be even a fifty-fifty game. I think she she's a good bet to win that match. Yeah, I like her, and and, and these conditions would suit her. She's she's a good mover, and and she's. She's she used to be sort of tagged as a clay court, but she's she can play on hard courts, and I think she left too much for Cornet in that match. Um, the second quarter, um, Danielle Collins, who I'm sure when it's priced up will be quite a strong favourite. Um, I mean, given her form and, and ability, um, also in that second quarter, you've got Xi Yu Wang, who's the left handed Wang from China, and uh, Katie Volanet, who had a good run not so long ago. Uh, I think that was in the, the one in Thailand. She had a decent run. Uh, the third quarter looks particularly weak. You've got Lucia Bronzetti, who, who actually beat Daria Kazakina last week in Dubai. And Yue Yuan, another Chinese player. She's the eighth seed. That that gives you some indication um, of what, you know, of the sort of quality of the lineup. Alicia Parks is in that third quarter. Taylor Townsend would be interested in quicker, in, interesting in quicker conditions, but she won't get them here. Uh, and then in the bottom bottom quarter, Sloane Stevens, she's the number two seed. I mean, the only other player, I mean, her and Collins, ability-wise, you'd say those two are quite some way clear. Uh, Peyton Stearns is the seventh seed. Uh, you do actually have Anastasia Sivastova, who, who's back from pregnancy uh, and childbirth. She, she's playing She's playing Julia Riera from Argentina, who's quite interesting. She's um, She has played well on clay in recent months. Um, and, and taken a couple of decent scouts. She also has a decent serve. Um, she's a player I, I'm interested in, in, in for the whole season, um, and especially with a view to, to Roland Garros. I think she's probably around 80 or 90 in the world at the moment. But it is a, it's a weak event. Even for a 250, this is, this is a pretty weak event. And, and I think, you know, I think Collins will be a clear favourite. We know this is her last season on tour. And, and that gives me a little reservation just... I'm not convinced she'll be totally up for this because it is such a weak event. I kind of think your last season on tour, you know, you want to be playing the slams. You want to be playing the big tournaments and, and up against the big names. And we saw her not so long ago. I think it was in Dubai, have a good run. Um, sorry, in, in Doha, have the good run. And maybe this might just be a bit, I don't know, last season, this might just be a bit ordinary fair for her. I don't know. but Or she could until go high. It's... Or she might want to win in front of the American support. Look at the tournament. She, she could. Win and just go and play. Hit, and just hit it freely and no no, no pressure. Well, I quite like her. I, I, think, I think she's going to make the final. But I, I think I think she'll, she'll come through. I think that top half of the draw is... I think the whole draw is, is really, really... I think the American players will do well here. I think home advantage will help them. I think the motivation, obviously, they want to come in 
in, in good form heading into Indian Wells and, and Miami. And so I think that the incentive will be for the American players to do well here. I think you might have an all American final. Who do you well, like? Colin, Colin Stevens, do you think, or Colin Stearns? Perhaps? Colin Stearns. Colin you think Stearns. Colin Stearns? It's Colin possible. Stearns. I mean, co- I mean, you look at that top half, Colin should be coming through with no problem at all. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, Xi Wang is the other seed in her quarter. She shouldn't present too many problems. Kalanina's not in form. Osorio maybe might be difficult. That would be the semi-final. Harry, Harry has this horrible habit, Deanne Parry, of taking a big name in the first round or early on in the tournament and then fading. Um, but if she could string, if she could sustain her form over a tournament, she'd be dangerous. Um, bottom half. I mean, Stevens and Stearns in that bottom quarter look for standouts. Um so yeah, it could well be in all an American final. As I say, until we see the odds, we, we can't really make a, a, a judgment on who to back. But I'd be I'd be surprised if Collins wasn't quite a short priced favourite, and and she'd be just she'd be worthy of it. As I say, my only concern is that maybe you know she wants to you know be up against some bigger names and playing in some bigger tournaments, but. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll wait and see. The odds will be available uh, by the time this drops. I'm certain that with Bet Rivers, head to the Bet Rivers website. You'll be able to see the odds in there. I quite like Collins. I quite like Stearns. I think the Americans will do well. Rory believes me, Collins as well, but he thinks he, I don't think she's going to be as short as you think. I think she'll be the favourite. I think Kalanina might be the favourite. I think she's going to be. She'll, I reckon she'll, you'll probably get about four to five to one. That's what I'm hoping. Um, that kind of price. If she was plus 500, it would be a bet. Yeah. Collins, I'd back her at plus five hundred. I suspect she'll be more like plus three hundred, plus three fifty. But we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Uh, so that's really it. Unfortunately, we can't really go into more detail on that tournament in Austin, Texas. We can about in San Diego, and we have two picks there. Pavlachenko at seven to one, and in the bottom half, the draw we gone for Serenko at thirty three to one. So a nice big outsider in a, in a week of tennis shocks. Um, Next week, uh, there's loads of tennis being covered in Dubai. I'm traveling to Dubai in the morning. I'll be over there on our Instagram account. Put on our Instagram account at Because We Win. You'll be able to see me courtside uh, at the tournament over in Dubai, the ATP Tour 500 event. There'll be a, a w, an ATP Tour uh, game bet match show. Myself and Sean Calvert dropping a little bit later on today. And also, there's going to be a lot of content uh, in the week as well. And uh, next week, it's going to be the start of a real busy couple of months uh, here on the Betting Weekly Studios on the YouTube. We have the tournament in Indian Wells. That starts on Wednesday. So we will be a little bit different in our schedules next week. But Rory will be looking at the women's draw there. And then, obviously, uh, a couple of weeks after that, or 10 days after that, I think it is now, it's the yeah. tournament in uh, in Miami. And uh, we have a women's event there. And it's the tournament we bet Kvitova last year to win it. So uh, hopefully we can... Uh, Get another nice big price there. So lots of action coming. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Betting Weekly Studios on YouTube. Uh, give us a follow on our socials, Instagram and on Twitter at Because We Win. And also make sure you download this podcast, Betting Weekly WTA, as long as all the other uh, podcasts we have, Betting, uh, Betting Weekly Game Bet Match as well, and Betting Weekly Premier League, are all available on your preferred podcast provider. Rory? Thank you very much for your time. A bit, a bit of a Thanks, bit Nigel. Of, we can't really go much into the, the detail in Austin, but uh, wait to see those odds. But Pavlachenkova is our pick, and Serenko at a nice price each way in the bottom half of the draw. Uh, good luck with your picks, and uh, give us a like, give us a follow, give us a review, and uh, good luck for the week. Take care. <laughs>